Hey wizard, so in this video, we're going to learn how to fundamentally value any given cryptocurrency with no TA required. This is purely on a fundamentals basis. Now the calculations that I use are in a link in the description. So feel free to go and use that spreadsheet so you can go and input any values for your own cryptos. With that said, remember to do your own research. This is the method that works for me and it may not work for you. So the first item is intrinsic value. Here is a centralized model, as you would have seen before, where any person can connect to Google and make requests and get answers for those requests. Google will have its own servers and its own machines where it stores data that it can then use to give you the most relevant search results, et cetera, et cetera. And there's not just Google. There's of course YouTube or Facebook or Apple or Gmail, et cetera, and they all work on the centralized model. Well, cryptocurrency also runs on the internet, except as you know, it runs on this model, it runs on the model of a network where we have nodes that are connected to each other peer to peer that even you and I can access without running our own node, right? If you go and query Ethereum or you go and query Bitcoin, you are connecting to a node provider and they are sending you that data as well. But this here is just showing basically the nodes running and communicating with one another. So this looks very similar to the model of the fax machine for those of you who are as old as me and remember what a fax machine is. Now a fax machine allows someone to send or receive messages as long as they have the fax number or think of it as like the telephone number for another fax machine, meaning fax machines are not very useful on their own. A fax machine needs to be connected to a network to become useful. This means that the value of the network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users. And this is a quote from Metcalf. So if you haven't heard of Metcalf's law, I really encourage you to go and look up Metcalf's law. This is a network effect, it's real, and it cannot be ignored for crypto because cryptocurrencies are basically just mini internets within the internet or let's think of it as mini networks within a larger network. Now we know from a demand perspective that the number of unique users using say the Bitcoin network is directly proportional to how valuable that network is. And the same could be true for Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency. But what I would argue is that these cryptos are a lot more valuable than fax machines. And we're not gonna give them any credit for that, we're gonna value them the same way as we would value a network of fax machines. But cryptos allow us to do a lot more than just send and receive messages. They allow us to store data or run programs. In Ethereum's case, these are called smart contracts. Some blockchains even handle identity or act as a bank account because we can send and receive transactions to one another and store balances and we can even communicate to one another. Now, whether a cryptocurrency uses a blockchain technology or a DAG technology or a Tangle technology or anything in between, they have certain properties. And those properties are, they are trustless, there's no middleman, they're private in some cases, and you can save dollars by removing the middleman. So cryptocurrencies do have an intrinsic value. And in my mind, they sit here, they are part of the internet. They are networks within a larger network, just like Google, Apple, Gmail, etc. We have other networks that carry intrinsic value for users. They just work differently. And because they work differently, they give us some unique properties. Now, I'm not going to give any weighting to crypto for those properties whatsoever, but I just wanted to make sure that we make it clear that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. They're not going to disappear despite what the media is putting through at the moment. But what, for example, is Bitcoin's intrinsic value? Now I'm going to measure Bitcoin's intrinsic value in terms of Metcalf units. This is not a real thing. You will not find Metcalf units. I doubt it if you Google it. It's a Seanism, but it's a way that I can give a unit to something abstract that we're going to use to get a dollar value. Don't understand? Don't worry, it's simple. Follow along and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. So demand is important. Everything comes down to supply and demand metrics. And at the end of the day, the daily active addresses are a very, very good way to understand how many users are using Bitcoin. There are about 914,279 of them. So we need to square that number to be in line with Metcalf's law. And that gives us a value of about 835 or 836 billion, if I round that up. What we do need to do is now take into account the supply side. 
So what we can do here is take into account the circulating supply and divide it into that number. Today, Bitcoin's circulating supply is about 19.3 million. So if we take that and divide it into our Metcalf valuation there, we get a figure of 43,417 Metcalf units for Bitcoin. This is very useful, but it is not our US dollar number. Now you could argue that the circulating supply is lower because of lost accounts, etc., etc. But I would say that counts against the integrity of the network and it, it kind of all washes out. Now we can also do this for Ethereum and we can see Ethereum comes to a figure of 1349 Metcalf units. Cardano comes to 0.09 Metcalf units. Solana comes to 50 Metcalf units and Aptos comes to 9.42 Metcalf units per a coin. So now let's go back to our Bitcoin example, because now what we need to do, given that we have our Metcalf units per coin, is we need to go and get our actual dollar value. Well, let's go back here to our internet example. How do we value the internet today? Well, you might say, well, it must be based on the revenue generated from the internet, and that's a figure of some crazy number, etc. But no, what are you personally willing to pay to access the internet today because you do pay it. We use broadband and the global average cost monthly for broadband is about $3.50. Could be off, might be higher, might be lower. In the West, in the US, in the UK, for example, it's a lot higher. So if you take $3.50 multiplied by 12 months, that's a cost of $42 per year that you're paying to access the internet. And if we assume 5% of that is spent on crypto, then we can get a figure of $2.10 for crypto. Now, let's assume that this is way off the mark and let's actually just discount this by 50% to use a margin of safety, which you know from the previous video I did on valuing stocks, I like to use margin of safeties. That gives you $1.05 as a value for what you are prepared to pay for the internet annually carved out for crypto. Let's take our 43,417 Metcalf units and apply it by our dollar factor. And that gives us a valuation of Bitcoin of $45,588 based on the 5th of January, 2023. It's today, it's when I'm recording this video right now. That is the valuation if you're like me, you're a developer, you wanna partake in the network, what should you be prepared to pay? As an investor, what I would do, similar to the stock valuation video, is take a margin of safety, half that number, because you want to know you're getting a good deal. And if you do that, you can see that Bitcoin comes out at a valuation of $22,794, discounted valuation. So when we compare this, to its actual price today, which is $16,803, we can see that Bitcoin is actually 26% undervalued. Then when I compare it to Ethereum, I'd say Ethereum is not. Ethereum is overvalued based on this fundamental methodology that I'm using here. Solana is about 55% undervalued and I, as a developer, love Solana. I have developed on Solana. Now Cardano looks significantly overvalued and the reason is because I'm using fundamental analysis here of supply and demand. The circulating supply of Cardano, maybe I got something wrong here, but it's sky high, like it's massive. And when I do the same valuation for Aptos, I get a value of $9.89, which is 24% under its actual price today. Again, making Aptos actually a strong buy. Now you might say, what about the demand and growth. Some cryptos may grow astronomically, but I'm going on the assumption that you know everything everyone else in the general public knows today. If that's you, then I'd rather take the data I have today, half it, and if it fits within that, then I've got a margin of safety I'm happy with, and it sounds like a good investment to me. Now, from a developer perspective, you might be working in the technology and have some real underground information that most people are not aware of. Well, that's the arbitrage. You can then say, well, I know what this will grow to based on X experience or X information that most people either aren't thinking about or aren't aware of. And you might say, well, what about the demand side? So where is the demand in this argument? Now, remember the demand is in the number of people using that network. If the number of people using the network is higher, then it's worth more from a demand perspective. And if the supply is sky high, then it's worth less per coin because the, 
the supply is sky high. And then one can get lost in ideas like the Nakamoto coefficient, how decentralized is it? These are all centralized, etc. And I'm here to tell you that I agree with you. I think centralization and decentralization is a very important discerning factor. But what I would also say is if people are using it and it's a network, whether or not it's decentralized is irrelevant. If people are using it, the network is larger. If the network is larger, it grows by n squared based on Metcalfe's law. You could also ask the question, why were prices so high in the past? Well, just because there's a fundamental valuation for something here. Number one, doesn't make it right. Or number two, doesn't mean that's why people buy. There's gonna be a lot of institutional money flooding in and out based on capital asset pricing models and whether people want risk on investments or not. At the end of the day, people buy because of emotion and belief. That's my opinion. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.